going to be on the realities of our lives. So I want to start by um, telling you a bit about Jandiri. So Jandiri is a model of differentiated service delivery for children, adolescents, and young people living with HIV. It started in 2004 as a support group, and they decided to call themselves Jandiri, meaning accept me as I am. And this was uh, the, in response to the increasing availability for treatment by lack of psychosocial and community support to address their complex histories, emotional and psychosocial issues. We hope to promote both their psychosocial and uh, treatment outcomes. And as you can see, no, they can't see. <laughs> I'm being told you can't see. <laughs> okay, I'll continue, but um, uh, it will be quieter in a short while. So the model didn't just start off at once, but over the past 15 years, it has evolved. Um, okay, it's fine. So over the past 15 years, uh, it has evolved uh, with new interventions being piloted in response to the needs of the children, adolescents, and young people living with HIV. And at each stage, um, these have been implemented together and integrated within the care provided by the National Health and Protection Services. I would have loved you to see. So at the heart of Shandiri, uh, young people living with HIV, they're 18 to 24 years, and they are trained and mentored as community adolescent treatment supporters, or CATS. So CATS are based in the clinics, but they manage a caseload of children, adolescents, and young people living with HIV between the health facility and uh, the community, thus forming a vital bridge between the two. And Zimbabwe supports... Um, and Shandiri supports Zimbabwe's Ministry of Health and Child Care to ensure that children and adolescents are found and linked early. CATS conduct in this case finding in the homes uh, and clinics to find undiagnosed children so that they link them to, art service, uh, to HIV testing services. And they work closely with the um, uh, village health care workers and their trained case care workers in the community to identify those children and then link them to the services. So they ensure that these children are, in, are linked uh, for HIV testing and they're initiated on art and then they provide that ongoing peer-led support uh, and also identify challenges that are being faced by these children, adolescents living with HIV. They are trained uh, to identify the red flags and issues requiring further assessment and referrals. And again, they work with these community cadres from health and social protection to ensure that um, this, uh, there is a response to the needs that arise from these children. So we are not a research institution, but we've found support from other research uh, partners and our program data and research studies we have conducted have found improved uptake of HIV testing services, improved retention and adherence, as well as viral suppression and mental health amongst those children, adolescents, and young people receiving Shandiri as compared to those uh, receiving uh, standard of care alone. So, Adolescents' HIV history are very different, and the situations in the current lives are constantly changing. For example, we have uh, we work with children, adolescents that are vertically infected, and also that are infected as a result of sexual abuse. And as young people face uh, living with HIV, we face multiple barriers in accessing uh, testing. Uh, treatment as well as adherence, but I want to emphasize on the psychosocial uh, challenges as well as the mental health challenges facing young people and uh, our caregivers. So as you can see, we have the story of um, of Rudolph. 
we may have access to art. That's what I want to emphasize that yes, you may have access to art, but we are still trying to come to terms with the events that happened in, our, in the past, as well as ongoing challenges that we face <laughs> in our lives. And these all impact on viral load. So for Rudo, she was vertically infected and tested late and commenced art at the age of 10, but her childhood had been marked by profound loss, grief, stigma, rejection, neglect, withdrawal from family members, even from school. And um, when she started art, she was linked to Shandi for community support and uh, her viral load dropped initially and she did well for two years but that continued stigma grief uh, resulted in attempted suicide and around that time her viral load increased again as you can see and then we enhanced support with mental health intervention and linked her to social protection uh, uh, services and then her viral load dropped again only to increase when things didn't go well when she disclosed to her boyfriend. I think you can agree with me that anyone living with HIV, we also have feelings. At a point, we want to have relationships. Well, Rudolph did a good thing to disclose, but it didn't come out well. And after the rejection, she got stressed. Her viral load went up again. And again, we enhanced support, and she resuppressed, and she has been virally suppressed for four years now. Prolonged unresolved grief, uh, stigma, and rejection resulted in depression and thoughts of suicide. Diagnosis that may have been well missed without sustained community engagement. So cats are there to identify this risk early and refer um, for the services needed, often in tandem with the village health workers as well as the case care workers. Okay, so we have another story of Petty. Petty is um, Petty is an example of the thousands of girls who started out af um, after being infected during years of repeated sexual abuse, changing roles, stigma, and neglect. She started out at uh, 11 years old, but didn't have the necessary information and support. Uh, and she could not uh, dare well to her treatment. So her viral load increased and she was referred to Shandiri and supported by the cats in the community and her viral load went down at 14 years. However, that suicidal ideation that was still there and depression followed with poor adherence, her viral load increased again and enhanced support was given. She had to switch to second life but with support from the clinic, the cats, community cadres, the mental health nurses, she is now suppressed. So you can see it from Rudo and Petter's treatments and history and clinical outcomes. They were intrinsically linked with their home lives, psychosocial circumstances and mental health. Although they do not have access to the intensified programming on GBV, on testing initiation, as they were growing up in the early years of the epidemic, they were later linked on to the services and have shaped how we provide services today. So what am I saying? We cannot think of retention in care without thinking of the experiences that we have in our communities, in our schools, our homes, our lives, and our bodies, our minds, our hearts, and our souls. All VC programs can identify and respond to these issues if implemented properly. And in doing so, they are the backbone to clinical programs. And when all VC programs and clinical programs are fully integrated, that is how we will change the stories of children growing up with HIV. Thank you.